before starting the session that everyone enters the room. Okay, let's start. I see that uh, more and more people are joining this session. That's great. Very happy for that. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the session on social changes and transport inclusiveness. My name is uh, Henriette Cornet, and I will be your moderator today. I am senior manager at UATP, which is the International Association of Public Transport. And I'm also the project coordinator of SHOW, which is a very uh, big project which started this year and which deals with the demonstration of automated mobility uh, in 17 cities across Europe. We have a great session ahead of us uh, today with four presentations of projects. And uh, these presentations are recorded and uh, they will be followed by a discussion with the speakers because the speakers are with us today. And uh, we, you are very, very welcome to ask questions into the chat uh, to the speakers, and we will, uh, they, will, uh, they will answer it after all. Don't be shy, let's make it a bit uh, lively. These sessions, these virtual sessions tend to be a bit dry sometimes, so go ahead, uh, ask your question, and it will enable us to have really a, a good conversation afterwards. But first of all, uh, we have the pleasure to have with us today Maria Carbone. We'll make the inter introduction for this session and set the scope for our discussion. One word about Maria. Maria is a policy officer in the Research and Innovation Unit of DigiMove, working on the research aspect of gender and social impacts of automation and digitalization. So perfect, perfectly matching with our session. She coordinates inter international research cooperation and Horizon 2020 implementation issues with the INEA Executive Ag Agency. Prior to joining DigiMove five years ago, she worked in DigiSynect on digital single market issues and international relations. Maria has a master in business administration and a bachelor in economics. So uh, Maria, uh, the stage is yours. Please uh, uh, turn on your camera, perfect. And uh, yeah, stage is yours. <laughs> we cannot see you yet. Uh, it is, um, I'm to set uh, today the theme for this session. Um, and uh, I would like to say that four projects, uh, Diamond, Tingo, High Reach, and Inclusion will present their activities and results. And uh, the first two are working on uh, uh, to address gender differences and identify skills and strategies that are needed to fully benefit from today's uh, technological advances and to avoid exclusion. The remaining two uh, have developed use cases and new innovative uh, business models to improve the uh, accessibility, inclusiveness and equity um, of public transport. So what is the context for uh, this work? Uh, research shows uh, that companies with a balanced workforce and an inclusive culture are six times more likely to be innovative. However, only 22% of the transport work for, uh, transport uh, workers in the EU are female. So now considering that equality and inclusiveness is uh, a precondition for innovation and sustainability, taking action uh, towards a more gendered balance and inclusive transport is essential to address the challenges of climate change, uh, aging population, the ongoing digital transformation, and the social, economic, and health impacts uh, brought on by COVID-19. Now, through its gender equality strategy, uh, 2020 to 2025, which was published uh, earlier this year, 
the EC is committed to systematically ensure that the gender dimension is uh, addressed uh, and in, in the design of all of its EU policy areas, and that includes uh, RNI. However, the assessment of uh, gender equality and other forms of diversity in transport research and innovation is complicated by the fact that <clears throat> gender disaggregated data related, uh, for example, to employment, travel patterns, uh, perceptions and differences of transport modes is very scarce. Uh, industry specific data that could provide a, a comprehensive overview of the number and status of women currently employed across different occupation and modes of transport is also very difficult to find. And as, trans, as jobs in, the trans, in transport tend to be dispersed across different sectors of employment, you know, in, for example, customer services and administration, trades, uh, technical services, operations, maintenance, etc. Uh, specific sex disaggregated data related to employment in different occupations within transport is challenging to procure. So our four projects have worked hard to gather the available data, identify the best practice use cases, and develop innovations in order to build a solid knowledge base upon which we can further work to construct a fairer and more inclusive transport system. Let us uh, now uh, join uh, to listen to their presentation and then possibly discuss later on uh, their findings and uh, their results. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria, for your introduction. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will have uh, videos now for the four projects. So, uh, thanks again. Thanks again to, uh, to everyone. I see that Lucia is missing. Lucia, are you with us? I am coming now. Okay, great. Great to see you. Okay, thanks. Thanks again <laughs> uh, for this uh, for this session. So I will start with um, yes. It was during your presentation, Lucia, for the Diamond Project. You mentioned that you actually cooperate already with the uh, Tingo Project. If I'm correct, if I'm uh, correct, and I think the topic of consultation and cooperation between projects is something very very important for European projects. So can you tell us more about that? How you did it and i will also ask the other speakers how do you make consultation with other projects and maybe not only I, i'm curious to know if uh, how do you cooperate also with projects that uh, focus on inclusivity and so on on social aspect but maybe also technical project do you have this kind of consultation so please lucia if you could start yeah, yeah. maybe i uh, i can start and then maybe hilda can uh uh, complement my my questions because uh, I know she was uh, also in involved on this uh, discussion with, uh, between the both projects. Uh, just uh, well, basically we we work together because because uh, uh, we we thought that was important that both project uh, was a, uh, were the, the same. Um, how to say in. Um, uh how to say uh maybe uh how how you know uh we are working on a interdisciplinary uh, uh partnership and and then um, we are working on um a, a survey where we are uh different profiles from from not only from a gender perspective of uh, the uh, of the users and employment also we have a uh, inclusiveness uh, approach or on the project and we define a very detailed uh, socio demographic uh, survey when where we address or try to collect data from a very specific uh, profiles from the users and, uh, and employees and we thought that uh, was very important to collaborate uh, between the both projects uh, in the definition of this uh, social demographic uh, survey, um, we are working as well on different um, events and different um, dissemination activities uh, within the 
both projects. We are also willing uh, to to share uh, the different data sets that uh, we are getting from from the data collection. Um, so I think uh, maybe here that you can uh, support on on this. Uh, I think I, I address uh, the main uh, activities that's, and that we are working together, but uh, if you have any other. Oops, Hilda, Hilda, it seems that your uh, microphone is mute. So on the left side, you so, can... So, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks for all the inspiring uh, presentations here. Uh, and also for this um, relevant uh, question. And uh, I certainly think that we have, as Lucia has uh, already uh, said, we have um, a common interests and uh, common goals in, in parts of our projects. But I would also add to that, that the Tinko and Diamond projects are also different, of course, because otherwise it wouldn't make of the European Union to finance two projects if they were identical. So um, as you probably also heard from my presentation, the Tingo project is, uh, should I say, broader in its uh, scope. Uh, and we also work a lot with methodological uh, developments. We also have our roadmap will be published by, by um, routlets here um, soon. Um, and, and uh, I mean, we'll focus on this idea of gender smart mobility and how it, it, it can be translated, how it can be practiced in, in various uh, uh, areas. And, um, but of course, the, the, the quantitative uh, um, methodological, the quantitative tools of, I mean, service and, and things like that, here we have uh, close uh, con uh, convergences with with um, the Diamond Project. And we are also planning, I think, a shared um, conference, right? Uh, next year, we just had a, one conference here one uh, month ago, and we have a shared conference uh, next year. But having heard all the presentations here, I also think there are uh, obvious reasons to cooperate with all these wonderful projects and pilots and, and experiments that are taking place and I don't know whether this is making a leap now because I was just considering how can we convey all these wonderful ideas into a more uh, powerful uh, um, policy plan for you, the European Union because our frustration, and this was also the set up, you know, the, the, the departure of the Tingo project was that some of us have been working in this area for 10, 15 years. And it seems as if there are these pockets of knowledge uh, around, but they are not uh, translated into the real powerful European policies. And this is really what we also want. And therefore policy is also one of our, uh, our goals here. And perhaps we can, we can also take this uh, further, yeah. Yes, very, very interesting point. And I think that's also the goal of such an event like today to have this oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. this consultation also with EC representatives. So I think that's, that's the goal, but I, I get perfectly your point. And uh, Simone, how have you collaborated with other projects? Uh, are you planning to, how do you see this uh, consultation and this not working in silos and avo avoiding duplication and be sure that uh, results are maximized to, to see the impact? Yeah, yeah. Just of all, let me uh, remind that uh, our project enter is already ended, so I can tell you what happened in, in the past. I mean, what we did during the the project implementation. Indeed, we um, established some cooperation with uh, projects dealing with uh, the same topic of uh, inclusiveness and uh, transport equity, um, particularly with inclusion, with with Michele that is represented here today because indeed our two projects went in parallel and we had the same uh, overall goal, which was to, find, to explore the, uh, the the limits of in terms of inclusion of vulnerable groups and to find solutions and innovative solutions, innovative business models. Indeed, we had uh, quite uh, two different approaches in achieving this goal. 
and uh, and therefore we um, developed and implemented our project activity at a different pace. I mean, probably, and maybe uh, Miguel can uh, um, elaborate this later. We focused, we had a strong initial uh, research on the uh, topic of transport poverty. So to understand what was the problem, because different user categories faces transport poverty from different uh, perspectives. So we we did a lot of research on this and we went also on the field to listen to end users. We met them, we worked with them to understand their needs, their behavior, and then to validate our solutions. And probably, I mean, we, we took more time in doing this. Nevertheless, during the, um, the work, we, we had some touch points with the inclusion project Basically, we met at uh, events, at the conferences that when we had the possibility to explain uh, together or in the same session or in uh, the different progress of our project. And then uh, till the end, when we as High Reach focused probably more on uh, the business perspective, on the, on the market of innovative solution, why probably inclusion focuses more on the public authority perspective. Uh, but then we, we we had the opportunity to uh, meet together in, in the final conference that we organized jointly. And it was really a, a very good opportunity to uh, present and to compare the results, the achievements in the, the different perspectives that we have in order to provide a, a broad uh, picture of the issue and what can be the solution. I think, Michele, do you want to add uh, something on that, on this uh, consultation aspect with other projects? Yes, I think that Simone explained very well uh, how the synergies of our projects have been achieved and developed uh, in the three-year duration, which were exactly the same. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, the high reach and inclusion cooperation is indeed a good example of how the same problem and the same uh, challenges have been addressed in uh, slightly different ways from slightly different perspectives, uh, fully complementary each one. So, uh, yes, as Simone said, um, we uh, focused more on the possibilities offered by different types of partnerships, especially uh, public private partnerships and also partnership with local communities which are very important uh, to sustain inclusive mobility in rural areas because uh, we know that um, uh, quite often in uh, national agendas uh, inclusive mobility is included but it's mainly addressed in urban areas where there is there are many more uh, possibilities to address specific challenges. Whereas, while um, in rural areas, in remote areas, this is uh, not often the case, unfortunately, uh, because it's really more difficult. There are more challenges, and it, it, there are more dispersion also of uh, people, travelers. So. Um, our proposal is to uh, look inside uh, the different business models and uh, proposals and solutions and see if uh, for local policy makers there are more possibilities to improve the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, you mentioned the, the importance of uh, local communities and I can see here a bit of um, not conflict, but something, a big challenge, uh, because we are all working in European projects, which are, there is so much diversity in Europe, but at the same time, the needs of the people have to be considered really locally because of everything that you said in your presentation. So it's maybe a very big question, and I guess 20 minutes will not be enough to answer that, but have one of you, and maybe you can just raise your hand to tell me if you want to, to, to react on that, have one of you dealt with this, uh, challenge of addressing needs of very, very locally, very specifically, maybe really like a neighborhood needs and reflect it on the European policy, something very large. So you can see this gap. Is it something that, or maybe in your, in your research, in your activities that, that you look at, to, does someone wants to react on that? Or is it maybe a too big box <laughs> to open? Hey. I think it's- But well, for example, there are- no. 
Yes, please. Sorry. Hilda, you want to start? Let, let's start with Hilda. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we work with this idea of gender and diversity gap analysis, gender and diversity and, uh, uh, analysis in, in regions and, and in cities. And I think this is an idea that can be upscaled because it can be added local uh, content. Uh, it, it, uh, and I mean, the 10 hubs uh, we, are, we are working with, they are also setting up their own, I mean, uh, filling in their own content. But, but it's, uh, it's a model or a tool that can be uh, applied, um, I, I think, also, and upscaled also to the national level and, and to the uh, European uh, level uh, as well. And I think it's a very important point uh, here. And uh, could I add to that? I think that it's, it would be very um, convenient or appropriate also if the European Union perhaps took action in terms of pooling all these uh, very good examples. Because as you can see, we have this uh, idea of an obser observatory and so we are setting it up, but after the 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 project has finished uh what then who who will take care and i think there's a lot of these um, um, loose ends in in you know coming up from or resulting from european union projects which the european union or horizon the next horizon program should, uh, should address and perhaps uh, set up some facilities because otherwise we have a lot of Good, but uh, also wasted um, work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michele, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I think that um, indeed uh, local communities are uh, very dispersed and they addressed a quite uh, wide uh, set of um, challenges and situations. But um, there might be a common, probably a common um, action uh, which could sustain the. Um, interventions like um, an example could be um, volunteer services. I mean, people, maybe retired people, we have a, a, a private site which studied this situation uh, who offer um, lift to uh, people, old people, for example, elderly people, but they can also offer. Um, support for transport for people in need of uh, health um, services like in this uh, period we know how important it is but to address these quite difficult situations they need to have additional instruments because they are not uh, trained for certain situations they are not they, have, they don't have the means the practical means they have not the experience and so they need the support from the public sector mm -hmm. to uh, get trained to get uh, additional uh, vehicles for example uh, specific vehicles and so on so this is a quite general aspect that uh, shows how public uh, community partnerships can be enforced in the future to uh, address more people and um, and then improve a little bit the situation. Yeah, I, see. I see. Okay, okay, very good. Um, I, I'm seeing the time, so and I want to cover some topics. That's why. Uh, mm -hmm. One question. I think I saw it in one of the presentation. Uh, the big word of the moment: COVID nineteen. That is on uh, all of our lives now and the life of everyone. And uh, have you considered it, uh, or do you, so mostly, and I'm, I'm looking at uh, Lucia now, uh, because your project is still running until next year, uh, one year left, if I'm correct. Uh, do you plan to address it in the, in the rest of your project? And how, uh, if you address the COVID situation, how you will uh, address it? Well, that's uh, a good point because it uh, was uh, a high risk in our project because uh, during the pandemic situation we we was uh, uh, we were collecting data in the in the middle of the data collection campaign. So this was uh, we we ran um, face to face uh, surveys in the station and also in the in the organization. So we 
we have to stop uh, all these uh, campaigns. Uh, we increase our um, uh, online uh, position in, uh, about the, this survey. We increase the publishment of survey in the, uh, the uh, social media and so on, but it is true that uh, was uh, uh, an important uh, key uh, key point in, in the project, but uh, now in uh, during the uh, the um, uh, the time that uh, was between the first and second wave, we uh, we collect of the rest of uh, data, so we we really um, uh, collect all of the the data. So it's a good point. And we hope that uh, this uh, situation uh, will not uh, affect on the rest um, of the rest uh, time of the project. I, I think we will get uh, the time lost in the next year. So I hope so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can imagine that uh, that uh, reaching suddenly reaching people online will be very you reach a completely different target group i mean yeah you can you left yeah. behind all the non-tech savvy people that maybe have no access so i can imagine in your type of project that it can be very very challenging um does another speaker want to react on the covid situation and how uh, how to manage despite the situation or maybe a bit rearrange uh, the, the some some object objectives if i if i can say or some activities yeah, if, I, if I may say, it. Ah, sorry. Maybe, maybe Simon, you start and after Ilda, you can. Yeah, answer. if I can say uh, something about from our experience, I mean, uh, to some extent in this nightmarish situation, we were lucky because uh, we managed to perform, to meet the people uh, before, before the pandemic, before the lockdowns. Uh, and uh, if it was, uh, and we were very lucky because if we consider that uh, uh, some, if not all, our um, target groups are vulnerable ones. So let's mention, mention, for instance, elderly people or uh, disabled. So something that uh, will be uh, were all much more vulnerable. And uh, honestly, it would have been very difficult to engage them uh, in um, through online tools because we are, we are also some kind of digital divide. I mean, we went in rural areas and remote areas with, uh, uh, so in this, in this so, I have, um, I have, so we were lucky in the sense, but also we were lucky that uh, in our approach, by developing solution, we had this uh, flexible approach. Uh, we wanted to um, engage uh, young entrepreneurs and startups. Uh, uh, with this open innovation approach, and it was a successful approach. Of course, when we drafted this uh, this approach, this methodology, we are not aware of this. But uh, probably startups, people, young people, uh, going into wanting to develop a new product and services, are the ones more ready to react on uh, on external challenges. And indeed, I mean, uh, the innovation part, the development of the solution uh, was exactly the, the part of the project that went through the, the pandemic. And uh, our startups uh, were very, um, very ready to react on this, and they changed their business proposition, their solutions. Uh, for instance, I can uh, mention a couple of examples. So one startup, I wanted to deal with the flexible transport, on-demand transport for passengers, but at a certain point they use the same algorithms, the same software approach to shift with the freight, freight delivery to, to deliver, for instance, um, stuff from pharmacies to people in vulnerable elderly people, people that were not allowed to uh, exit for home, so to, to bring the, 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 the product to them, to avoid that people had to go outside. Uh, so. and, and another example was about a platform for carpooling that was specifically tailored to 
services to the hospitals, both for, for um, doctors and people working in the hospital and then people, uh, users, had to, to go to the hospital. And uh, they, they took all the initiatives to avoid, uh, I mean, um, to, to deal with uh, social distancing, uh, to um, sanitary um, impacts, uh, and so, so they were very, very, very quick to, to react and to adapt to the solution. Okay, I see. Ilda? Yeah, the Tinko project, or within the Tinko project, we have been running several smaller surveys, both across borders, but also in Denmark and in Sweden uh, separately. And I think that the, the outcomes, as mentioned in my slide, was that, uh, that there is a tendency to radicalizing the differences, for example, between gender, so that more people take the car, and more uh, women, they stay at home or, or are still, you know, exposed to the risks of using um, public transport. Uh, and I think much more is needed in order to really catch up what is uh, happening. Because one thing is what, what's happening at the very moment. And I mean, it's clear that the public transit has become a kind of nexus of, you know, risky, risky behavior if you take I mean, if you use the public transit, you are also exposed to risks rather than, I mean, more than if you sit in your own car. But I think what is also important is the long-term effects, because we know that, uh, I mean, people are fleeing from the public transit right now here in the Copenhagen area. We have had an, a decline of 4 or 5 percent uh, during this period. And this will have economical uh, consequences probably in the long term. And another thing is that, for example, transport providers need to rethink the design of the transport uh, system, you know, the design of, of the, the um, vehicles and, and buses. Because I think also in future we'll be much more aware you know, touch or oh, no touch. We don't want to touch anything, uh, and, and I think we 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 need to. There is a lot of rethinking that is needed here, also in escalators, elevators. You know, all over the place, get in and out of uh, of vehicles and stuff like that. So I think this will really be important to follow up on because I mean, this COVID is probably not the last uh, we will experience here. In our time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we have now um, five minutes left for for discussion. I would like to very very quick that each of you maybe say one recommendation to future project coordinators. I'm sure in the audience now there are future project coordinators or people that we work on proposals writing. What will be from your perspective? What you learn from your project? Uh, what you would like to advise to future project coordinator. I just make the, the round table. Maybe Michele, you want to start? Be very, very quick because we have only four minutes left. So one sentence. <laughs> yes, thank you. There are, I think, many possibilities, many options which are still unexplored in terms of transport provision. So I would definitely recommend to uh, look into the unexplored possibilities and um, you will probably find that there are um, uh, options and uh, opportunities uh, that will be um, that will give uh, very good opportunities for, for um, people with inclusive um, suffering from transport poverty let's say so uh -huh. okay. that's my that's my recommendation thank you okay. um, uh, Simone, do you want to say one uh, one uh, recommendation to future project coordinator? Yes, uh, I mean I, ha I have one. Um, I'm not sure if it is. Um, I mean, if uh, actual project coordination can deal with this. Uh, but from what we learn and what I can see is that uh, these kind of projects are very long. I mean, uh, usually three, four years, and they start even before, probably one year before. So they have a speed, a duration, which is different from what the speed we have to react to the to the, the, the world, which is changing. It was changing 
in the transport sector by means of different drivers, I mean, the digitalization, etc. And now it's changing even more uh, at a rapid uh, speed because of the pandemic yeah. and so on. So the, my message is to try to be flexible and to adapt your work plan, uh, what you have to do in order to, to follow these changes. Otherwise, if you are too rigid, you cannot, I mean, what you will achieve is uh, not consistent with what you have to, to deal with. Yeah. Good, good point. Lucia, do you want to add something, to advise something to future project coordinators? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, uh, just uh, to to go through uh, the opportunity to um, to to build uh, an interdisciplinary partnership uh, consortium because uh, I think I think that uh, um, just uh, it's a difficult situation with, um, with managing uh, uh, interdisciplinary consortium, but I I think the the, the impact uh, on the results. Uh, of the project will be uh, increased uh, with this uh, co yeah, interdisciplinary collaboration. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I see. Uh, I see your point exactly. Ilda, do you, uh, do you want to? I, I totally, do you, yeah, I totally agree with this uh, point of interdisciplinarity, and I would like to have more interdisciplinary connections between social scientists and and uh, technical uh, technical expertise. And uh, I would also like to set up a, pro uh, a, a project on addressing all the privileges and, and the kind of uh, dominant ideas that drives the, the, the whole uh, transport system. And also to, to question, I mean, all the things that are now going on with the electric autonomous cars and all that. And I mean, also to to question the budgets and all that because it seems as if we are here in a cluster of our own and all the big buses and all the big money they are somewhere else and i i would like to have more uh, cross-cutting um, issues uh, going on here and and also to question the the kind of um, uh, privileging of of certain certain types of mobility uh, for certain people and then mm -hmm. leave the rest to, to the poor and vulnerable. I, I would like to see more uh, critical things uh, mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you all. We are perfectly on time. And uh, thank you for, for the spe uh, you. to the speakers first for your presentation. Thank you for the audience for joining for this great session. But we have still a lot of presentations ahead of us. So I will invite the audience and the speaker to go back to the, lo to the lobby and uh, please enjoy the conference. I hope you will have a, a good time there. Thank you and bye-bye. Uh, Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you.